Hi, Kelly Bennett here with Backstage 360. We are at the NAM Show 2022 at the Hilton Hotel, and we run into Jeff Mul. I knew I was going to do this. Jeff Mulrennan. Mulrennan. See, I knew I was going to do this. And he's a drummer with a new band called Mad Radio. Jeff, you've got a colorful past. And it basically came full circle here at NAM. So let's start back in the day. Your first NAM show, what were you doing and, and why were you here? First NAM show, 1985. I was a buyer for a retail store in Colorado called Pro Sound. Mm -hmm. And obviously at that time we were buying all the instruments for the store. So meeting with all the manufacturers and placing our orders for the year. Okay, and so you made a lot of friends in the industry because you were the buyer, you were on the other side of the coin, so to speak, when it comes to uh, traveling the NAM circuit. And so you got to know a lot of people in the industry. Yeah, and you know, mostly the manufacturers reps, but we were, we're also have clinics where we would have artists come in and do, you know, drum clinics, guitar clinics. So was able to meet not only the manufacturers reps, but all the artists who represented those companies too. So a lot of those guys became friends. And back in the day, you also had a band where you played the drums with some guys. Did I did have a band in the in the early '80s? Um, originally came from Florida uh, after school, moved to Colorado, and you know played in the clubs, did the circuit, and did you know mountain gigs and kind of toured the Western U.S. And this was probably in the early 80s, 80s, 85 range, and then started working in retail at that point. And, yeah. So what happened to the band at that time? As all bands do, uh, we went our separate ways. I mean, most of it was due to life, you know, but we, you know, we ran the course, went for the, went for the golds, you know, missed it by that much. Um, but, you know, all of us kind of scattered throughout the U.S. I moved... Uh, from Colorado to LA, and a few of the other members moved across the country. Some stayed in Colorado, some moved to Texas. But, uh, you know, back then it was just kind of playing for money for ramen noodles, and that wasn't enough to do anything. So we, we you know, all kind of took on new lives. You know, I started other things. It stayed always playing and have a, a recording studio that I started in California here, but not as an organized band. Okay, so now we fast forward. And now COVID hits and you have a studio in Los Angeles and you decide to get back behind the drums and contact your bandmates and tell me what happens next. So interesting, 36 years later, uh, we're twiddling our thumbs during COVID, not really, you know, in having the ability to record. And these days, recording virtually and remotely is not that unique. The unique part was doing it with people you haven't seen in the same room for 30 plus years, right? So we were able to use our technology, the time we had to spin that on new music. And, you know, we started getting these files and listening to them and thinking, wow, this is not just play around music. This is something we should do as a band. So the idea was to then create a project that was really for the three of us, the, the core members of that band, reuniting and doing this as a band project. So that's where we sit today. Currently, uh, the band Mad Radio is genesis of that 36-year process of living our lives. So a lot of them, uh, a lot of the guys probably have, you know, they've got married and their life went on and they all there have businesses. But to come back together again to make music, what is it like to play with them again and work with them again? Well, I think it's, it's different because we have the technology. It's funny because we now think about when we were in that original band, what we had to do to get in the studio, what we had to do to raise money to record in a real studio. You know, we had a place, I think we lived in a, a house together and we would record on this little reel-to-reel -reel two track. But today, you know, we have a full, you know, each of us have Pro Tools rigs or whatever we can record with. So what we have in terms of our capabilities of what we can make in terms of music now is so far beyond what we had at, the, at that time. And a lot easier. A lot easier, but you still have to play. So, we, you know, what we did do is not just do it all in the box. I mean, I play, you know, my acoustic drum set set up at the house. So everything is mic'd up and, and the guitar player and, and everyone were playing live to our to our virtual tracks and then just kind of swapping them out. Now, you guys haven't played together in the same room yet. 
We so in in the last twelve months. We, the, the two members who were not in Dallas, myself and Greg Matheny, who lives in Colorado, we flew to, to Dallas, where our third member lives and is a showrunner and has a product, production facility. And we shot music videos for all of our songs in one day, five songs. And we put that all together to kind of package our product, our, our EP. Uh, but that was the first time we had been together in the same room in 36 years. First time I had seen Brad in over 36 years. Tell me about the other members of your band. So Greg Matheny, who is the guitar player, is in Colorado. And he and I have known each other since third grade. So we met in Northern California. My father was in the, in the Navy and he was stationed in, in Alameda. And Greg's family lived in, in Northern California. So the first day of school, third grade, he and I met. And so we both became musicians at the same time. We, we found, you know, we were kind of caught the same lightning strike. And Brad and Brad Osborne, who is our kind of uh, songwriter, composer, singer, is in Dallas. Uh, and he was our original singer, um, along with two other members that are no, not in this current band. But at that point, he was our singer in the old band as well. Okay, so you got the band back together, and you start writing music, and you start playing music, and you're recording music. So tell me what's happening now. I heard you've got a album coming out. You've got you got signed. You got all kinds of stuff going on. Well, that, there's a lot of things going on. Yeah. So, so as you probably know, the day of, of promoting your own music or promoting music at all is pretty much online at this point. So, you know, through the steps that most bands take, you know, we found we have to find a way to get our digital music online somehow. And you know, living in in Los Angeles over 20 years I've been here I've met quite a few people in the industry and these are people that I knew maybe from here from the old days from Nam, or just people I'd met that were friends of friends who were in the music business and when they realized what I was doing with the band they said hey you need to do these things in order to establish distribution so you know we were able to organize you know with friends that I have to create our own record label and an imprint under Warner Music Group and Warner signed us to a distribution deal, a global distribution, based on, you know, the songs were great, but the fact that we had kind of a pipeline of, of things already in motion. The other thing we're doing is a full documentary of this whole story of us getting together after 36 years, uh, you know, reuniting and then the progression, but in process now trying to figure out, well, what do we do? Are we gonna play? Are we gonna tour? Are we gonna make this a real band? And I think we've all established that we would, we would do that. So, you know, part of what brought me to NAM was also for the first time as an artist, you know, to come to the NAM show and meet with all of my friends in the industry, you know, manufacturers, reps, and people who run these companies where musicians are trying to get connected to musical instruments so they can go out and tour. And over these years, I've had all these friends, you know, people that I've known, you know, either I've purchased equipment from or just had them as friends now I'm able to come in as an artist and represent them as not only a friend but as a player to promote their products yeah, so. and that's probably way different than what you're used to because you coming in before as a buyer and now coming in as an artist you know you kind of like fit right in right? it's it's interesting because I was you know in, in my role at the at the retail level was to sell equipment and you know represent whatever brand you know if we had every con kind of guitar every kind of drum set you know and i always had my favorite equipment and you know knowing that there were certain brands that i always believed in it just seems to be natural so these family members that i've known forever have said hey you're doing a great thing you're playing again let let us help you support the band support you but i've always sold their equipment you know so if i'm talking about symbols pisces symbols is my uh, is my company that I, you know, that I represent, and I've known the Pisces forever. And I used to do drum clinics, so I would do, you know, I'd bring artists that represented those companies to Colorado, and put on these big drum clinics with Vinnie Caliuta, Terry Bozio, and Dennis Chambers. I mean, anyone you could think of uh, in the drum industry. So I became known for that. Like all of the folks that I knew in the industry knew me as the guy who would do these big drum clinics. So now, now I'm able, it's like a first full circle to come in and actually represent these companies, you know, as an artist, um, you know, and be able to help share my understanding of the equipment 
and and sell their equipment for them, help them sell their equipment. So. So tell me about your music. What is it like? I mean, is it what type of music is it? What genre? What it, type of? I mean, a rock band, I would say. But but, it's it, you know we we were all when we started to build the kind of product together, we were influenced by all of the earlier you know the the rock bands of the seventies. You know, Led Zeppelin and Aerosmith and Deep Purple and all. I mean, that was kind of our yeah, inspiration. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, but but as a club band, we always had this esoteric live set. Like we would be playing a rock tune and then we'd play a Steely Dan song. Or we'd play something that was like, people are, what are they? So we were always kind of a little off, yeah. you know, that path. But this, this band is more of, a, I'd say, a straight ahead pop rock band. Okay. Um, you know, something that I think fits. The, the interesting thing about virtual recording is you know and for the for most of that you kind of hear it sounding canned or it, it doesn't have that formula of a live synergy okay. but our music seemed to have that for some reason I think it was the 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 genesis of us getting back together you know after that time we just had this kind of power that was that was showing up in the music and it to me that was kind of the first thing that we all said when we listened to it like we can't let this just die on the vine we have to do something to get it out there and promote it. So here we are. Okay, so when does it come out? Where can we find it? So it's all, the music, we have music out now on all the streaming channels. So Mad Radio has a Spotify channel, an Apple Music channel. We're, we have a big YouTube channel. And it's interesting too, on, you know, on YouTube, you have a video and audio kind of format, right? So your, your, your visuals are important. So the fact that we have this content, a visual content, We've had a lot of interest from Japan. We've had a lot of interest in Mexico and South America and in European countries. Not sure why. It just this algorithm just decided, hey, these are the people that might have interest in this music. And you know, the streams that we get on YouTube, though it's not a monetary ROI, so to speak, it's just you'll see kind of what the, the level of interest is at a, on a moment's notice. So it's kind of crazy. I still can't believe you produced five music videos in one day. Whoever produced that and put that whole together, I tip my hat wow. to them. Yeah, and Brad Osborne. That, that's amazing to me. So he's a he's a showrunner, and and works for you know does Lifetime television right. shows and and so we're it's talking his, about we're talking about you know costume changes and different you know um, sceneries and then everything. It's like wow. Well, crazy. so I'm the drummer. Yeah. I played 12 hours straight and I didn't stop because every shot was me. I had to be in every shot. I couldn't be like the guitar player who would take a break. I'm in playing at every shot behind every person. So I was not feeling great. Oh, I can day. imagine. There, you know, the quality. So it's, again, the thing that's so crazy is in the 80s, the, the, the demise of our original band, which is a whole story within. That we're being that's tell, we're telling us in a documentary now. Okay. So, so we're, we've been filming the documentary of the, the the band coming back together, getting a record deal, getting a label, all the challenges that we had to get social media building from zero yeah. to to where we are now, which is over thousands of people on our social media accounts, which we had none in six months, wow. and building f- from nothing. Right, so. But what we've done is, ha- you know, it's, it's all about content, you know, for people to have, if there's any bands that I, and I have, I'm not the magic, I don't have a magic wand, but in my world, I, I noticed immediately, it's, it's content is what people are interested in. You can see immediately when you post a photo that they like, it's 85,000 likes, right? It's, wow, that, what, did, what was that? Why did they like that 85,000 times? But it's the issue that most bands have to face. You have to create content and present it in every platform there is. So in distribution now for, for bands that are trying to get digital distribution, that we started at TuneCore, which is one that anyone can use. They just send their, their files to TuneCore for the first singles that we put out. And then when Warner Music signed us, we were able to, we, we like to call it, we went from a single cell to a fuel, full human in terms of music distribution with Warner Music because you have enti- like the entire world at your disposal for all the channels that most bands wouldn't have access to. So it was a pretty amazing opportunity, that we, but you still have to feed that engine and give as much content to them as you can. That's what they say, content is king. 
Well, and, and the so the the thought about the music too. So we were kind of shocked. We were getting really good response with the music from the from the sonic listener. You know, people going, "Wow, that sounds great." But we were kind of in this world where we were thinking, "Are we? You know, we're in this age group. Are we?" too old for the for that market and and it doesn't seem like that i mean there are people who are interested in classic sounding bands right. the new classic i don't know if that's something that people realize knows that what it is like that's bands like one. dirty honey and all yeah. these bands and you know uh, greta van fleet yeah. those bands are led zeppelin and aerosmith that's yeah. basically who they are okay. regurgitating their spin on it right. we had a different kind of perspective because we were actually around you know listening when those that stuff was actually coming out at one point or another right and it's it shows up in our tunes in a different way it has a sound but it's not dated so we had a you know we have a lot of kind of clever mix tricks that we did but we also mastered it um you know a lot of bands are mad like you'll send your file to a mastering company They'll just send you back a little MP3 or a WAV file within like an hour. Well, you being in the business, I'm sure you have somebody that knows what they're doing. Yeah, we Peter Dell, who is our, our mastering agent, our master yeah. uh, engineer, who's who's done everyone from oh, yeah. you know Frank Sinatra to you know Toto to yeah. you, you name it. I mean, the guy's been around forever. He he actually was working with us, and and the first thing he said is, "I this is the first thing I've heard fresh in 10 oh. years." Just because he would get file after file, just people just emailing him yeah. files. Wow, well, you've got you've got so we somebody. Had something, yeah. you know. I thought, and it, yeah. it's we're getting an incredible response. But now we have to go play. We have okay. to go out and do it. All right. So that's our step. Our next step. Okay. Live so, shows. all right, live shows. Uh, and if you want to listen to Mad Radio, please go to their website. All your music is up there, all and music. your spot, uh, the Spotify, Spotify, Apple Music, everything you can imagine. YouTube music. YouTube music. I, I can't wait to see those videos. Jeff, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Thank and you I, for having me. You are so welcome. Um, and good luck to you. I mean, I really think this is something. I mean, there always is a time and a place for everybody. And, you know, this well, is definitely going to be it. It's never too late. You know, never too late. Keep All right. Thank well, you. thank you so much. Have a great time at NAMM. Thank I'm you. Kelly Bennett for Backstage 360. We'll see you next time.